He is the head coach of the Los Angeles Rams, getting set to take on the Cincinnati Bengals on Monday Night Football. He is none other than Sean McVay. How you doing, Sean? Doing good. How you doing, Rich? Good. Uh, the radio audience can't see, but behind you it says urgent enjoyment. What does that mean? What does that uh, mean? You know what? That, that's something I've had up for a couple of years. There's been times when I've had that and times that I haven't, but we want to be consistent, Rich. And so I think we want to have a good urgency, but never lose sight of enjoying this. You know, it's a blessing to be able to do what we do. Um, and I really have loved working with this group this year. So it's a, it's enabled us to have an urgent enjoyment through the first couple of weeks, even though we haven't always gotten the results we wanted, but I've really loved this team and excited about the op on Monday night against the Bengals. Yeah, I bet. I bet. So let's talk about this team a little bit. Boy, there, there's a bunch of guys that that we're learning about. Um, let me just jump in with Puka Nakua, man. I mean, what what a revelation he is. He looks like when did when did you first see him? When did you first lay eyes on him? Well, I can remember even just watching his tape at BYU, and then you you talk to people that have been around him. He's a mentally tough guy, obviously physically tough, got great aggressive hands. But once you get around him and you get him in the building, he was mature beyond his years. He's got a great way about himself. Now, I would tell you this, Rich, until we started playing games, didn't know the edge and the toughness. You know, you always thought it could come to life, but it's, but seeing it in person and just watching how much fun and his competitiveness and his game day demeanor – He's a special guy. He certainly is a rookie that's mature beyond his years, and he's got a great rapport with Matthew Stafford, and that's a good thing uh, if you're a Rams receiver. Yeah, and where, where did that come from? It, I mean, 20 targets, Sean? But that's insane. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, is, is Cooper Cup looking at this saying, you know, you know, I'm I'm a little jealous of all the targets that 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 Matt's given him? I, I mean, think – uh, you know, I think the ball has had a way of finding him these last couple of weeks and, and he's made his plays. He's maximized his opportunities. There were some situations towards the latter part of the game the other day where he did get a heavier volume based on, you know, what we were doing uh, be, be behind a couple points and things like that. And so he is uh, he's a stud. I've been really pleased with him. He certainly is a physically tough competitor and uh, and we're really grateful to have him on our team. What's his role going to be moving forward? Do you think is this, well, is this it? What do you got? Yeah, I mean, I think we want to continue to take it a week at a time, but I've been really pleased with him. I think Tutu Atwell has also done a great job through the yep. first couple of weeks. And, you know, Van Jefferson is a capable player uh, who's had a lot of production over the last couple of years in our offense. Tyler Higby, I've been pleased with some of the things from our backs, but uh, we'll be excited when we get Cooper back. But but Puka is certainly establishing a, a, a really strong hold on a, on a big time role. And, and I think the more guys you can get involved, the better. But I've been really happy to see what he's done over these first couple of weeks. You expect Cooper Cup back once the first minute he he can? That's the hope. You know, when we put him on IR, Rich, we were hoping that it would give him some time to be able to take a step back, get himself right, feeling like the Cooper that we all know and love, and um, and hopefully he's able to return in week five. Uh, certainly are not going to rush that process, but that'll that'll represent the first availability for him to come back off of IR. And that's kind of always been the goal, but – uh, we'll see how he's doing when that time comes, but I am hoping for that. A lot of discussion about the turnover for your team this past, you know, yeah. non-playing season. Les Snead and you and uh, the roster turnover and getting to know these guys. There was a little bit of a conversation coming out, oddly enough, of Matthew Stafford's wife's podcast about him not really getting to know the guys as fast as he would want because guys' faces were in phones and things of that nature. Is that it was? Did you find a, a similar issue as well? You know what? I didn't. And I, and I, I think that Kelly was more joking about the old man more than, uh, than Got what it. she was saying in regards to Matthew has really connected with these guys, Rich. I think you've seen that over the first couple of weeks, he loves his teammates. They love him. That's why he was a unanimously voted captain, but they've been great. I think there's been a consistent energy. There's an enthusiasm. There's a, an attention and a work ethic that these guys bring every single day. I just like the vibe that they bring. I like the vibe that Matthew and Aaron Donald have brought, you know, and Rob Havenstein and Tyler Higby and some of our veteran leaders that have been here. Um, Ernest Jones is a young up and coming player who's, who's, uh, you know, been here and kind of seen what it looks like, but I've loved the way that a lot of the rookies and the second year players have come in um, and they're just continuing to earn everything that they get. And, and they love competing rich. And, and that's the one thing that I think when we're at our best, we're loving what we're doing. We're loving the opportunity and the challenges and, and these guys have taken these things head on, and that's what you want to be able to see. Sean McVay getting ready for Monday night uh, right here on Westwood One and the Rich Eisen Show. So let's talk about your relationship with Stafford. How has it grown since 
you know, Cabo when you guys first connected and then won a Super Bowl together. Yeah, I think it's been great. You know, I think both last year was was challenging for both of us, him, because I don't think anybody really understood that he wasn't. I think that nobody appreciates how much he was pushing through that elbow last year. He's a competitor. He's a warrior. Um, but when he's feeling good, he's as good as it gets. He loves a game. He's one of those guys, Rich, that, as you know, he elevates everybody that's around him. And I love Matthew as a person. I love what he brings to our team as a player. And I think the more that you're around him, the more you appreciate you know, just what a special human being he is. And oh, by the way, he's a damn good quarterback too. He sure is. So can you give me an example of how he's an extension of your brain on the field? Sean? Well, he, he's a lot smarter than me, Rich. So <laughs> I, I think we want to be able to maximize the things that he can do, but it's right. just the command. I mean, the things that we're able to do, the way that he's able to handle, uh, you know, getting everything communicated to his other 10 teammates. Um, you look at it really the first couple of weeks, we've been on our silent cadence. He's getting in and out of different checks and things like that. He's getting us in and out of the right plays within the timing of the play clock, whether it be on a 40 second clock or 25 seconds, it's just his overall ownership. And he truly is an extension of us. And he has a huge ownership in a lot of the things that we're doing because, Hey, if he likes it, you know, then that means that we like it as well. Okay. So um, you've got Zach Taylor on the other yeah. sideline. Um, I spoke to him about how he first met you. I'm wondering what your perspective of that story is. What, how I was pushy about making him commit to wanting to be on the uh, staff. He said <laughs> that you called him, gave yep. him 24 hours to make a choice. And then one hour later asked him if he'd made up his mind. Hey, when you're putting the staff together, as he now knows, you know, the, Hey, the urgency, there's no enjoyment. Yes. It's just urgent yes. is all we're hunting up. But I'll tell you, I had always respected him from afar. I remember when he was a big 12 player of the year at Nebraska, he yeah. got into coaching. I thought he handled the interim offensive coordinator role with the dolphins when Dan Campbell was the head coach incredibly well, rich. Um, and I just, that, that always struck a chord with me. And then you say, you got an opportunity to be able to get a great guy like this in your building um, what a great person, really smart coach, got a great ownership of really all 22, but also his background as a player, especially at the quarterback position. He had a great rapport with Jared and, and, uh, it was a short two years, but it was a really enjoyable two years until he left me for the Bengals. Yeah, I know. And, 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 and as I spoke to him, I'm sure you, you went over all this ground prior to the Super Bowl and the week leading up to that. Um, but here we are again, obviously with you guys. Uh, facing off against each other and 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 he and I did rectify his time at Nebraska because he threw multiple touchdown passes against my Wolverines to win the 2005 Alamo Bowl I remember um, that <laughs> oh yeah so we you know we, we we were able to get past that but obviously you know knowing him and uh, him knowing you how does that factor into a Monday night do you think well, out. I think uh, they've done a great job. There's been continuity, you know, with, with them on offense, on defense, and on team since he got there in 19. They've done a great job, Rich. So there is a level of familiarity, but you also appreciate that they've done a great job of evolving and adapting. And so I think Lou does a great job on defense. Zach and uh, Brian do an excellent job on offense. And uh, Darren does a great job on special teams. So there, there's great challenges. They've got great players. And there's a reason why they've been in two conference championships each of the last couple of years, and then a Super Bowl a couple of years ago against well, us. One of the reasons why is because of the quarterback too. I mean, I, I, I'm, clearly you're monitoring what's going on with his calf. And it's, yep. as you and I are talking right now, up in the air. And you've got maybe one of the greatest testers of calf's endurance in 99, uh, Sean. I mean, yes. I, do, you, do you go up to Aaron and say, hey, if this guy's planned, you know, go hunt? Do you ever do that sort of thing? You know, I, I think our, I think Aaron's going to go hunt no matter what. So right. yeah, you and I both know Mitch, I don't have to hype him up anymore, but I hope, you know, we've got to prepare for him. He's one of the best. Uh, there's a reason why he's done as well as he has leading that team over the last few years. I hope he's, you know, able to get healthy, but you want to be able to compete against great players. And uh, we've got to prepare to be able to see him. If not, Browning is a very capable player that, you know, can operate their offense at a high level behind him. Got Sean McVay here for a few more minutes in advance of Monday night football. Um, I'll give you the floor and what happened with Cam Akers, you and the organization. Sean yeah, you know, Long really, I, I appreciate what Cam did over the last couple of years, but we just felt like it was in the best interest to be able to allow him to explore another opportunity, allow our team to be able to move forward. And I know Kevin O'Connell's excited about adding him to their roster, but 
felt good about Kyron Williams, Ronnie Rivers. You know, we've got Zach Evans and Royce Freeman also um, on our roster and then on the practice squad with Royce and just felt like it was in the best interest to be able to kind of make that move. And uh, sometimes it's, it's not always the easy decisions, but I ultimately have to be able to do what I think is best. And that was what we felt like was best. All right. Let's talk about you a little bit here. You, you, you needed some time to think about returning to coaching. Do you uh, look back at that and say worthwhile? How silly it seems. It, 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 you know what? Uh, last year was a really humbling year for me, Rich. And a, a year that I lost a lot of perspective, but it was really beneficial for me. I've been so fortunate to be a part of this organization going on my seventh year. And, you know, you don't take for granted how much of a blessing it is to be able to do this. And I love this. And for whatever reason you get, whether you get caught up a little bit too much in your own ego or you lose your values and principles that have guided why you love this so much. Uh, you get a little bit too caught up in the results instead of loving, you know, the people in the process and, um, it seems so silly and I'm so grateful that I had people around me to help kind of gain that perspective to really be able to reflect and get humbled in a way that forces you to say like, all right, it's one thing to read books about it. It's another thing to go through it and say, man, this isn't the leader. This isn't the person you want to be. Um, and you have an opportunity to be able to rectify that. And, um, I can't even believe that was a thought, but it was something that I can be a stubborn guy, Rich. Um, and I think going through last year, while it was not the most enjoyable, it was very necessary to continue to grow, to mature, to try to be more the man that I want to be, whether that be as a coach, a husband or a friend, or hopefully sooner than later, a father, as we I know. See, so yes. um, I'm loving this. Uh, I love this sport. I love coaching this sport. I love working with players and coaches and, um, you know, love working with Les and Kevin and Tony and Mr. Cronky and, uh, I, I laugh. It's it's almost funny to ever think that was a consideration, but it was something that when you go through some challenging times, um, you can learn a lot. And, and I do feel like that was what uh, what occurred for me. Were you just taking the losses too hard? You just I think so. Stuck? You know, and, and then I think sometimes you're you're internalizing it. And it and again, you know, as embarrassing as it to admit, you know, you tie up your identity or your self-worth in those things. And you realize like, hey, who the heck have I become as a result of this chase? instead of pouring into the guys, doing the best that you can, loving the opportunity to compete. But it was almost like as a result of so many things going well, you just lose total perspective and you think anything less than winning it again or doing certain things that you've been fortunate enough to do just doesn't make it even worth it. God, is that silly? But at the time, you know, you just lose perspective and you lose your way. And Fortunately, I feel very confident that because of the people that I'm around and some of the things that you just have to be able to dive into and be honest with yourself, I, I feel uh, I feel a lot more like being uh, I feel like I'm a lot closer to to being the man that the people that I love and care about deserve to be around. I'm going to take a shot. I don't know the answer to this question. And normally as a as a paid professional that I am, Sean, I, I, I like to know the answers or at least assume before asking. But did you ever have a conversation with John Madden? about coaching did you ever pick his brain because that you know what I wish I did I, I I'm very familiar with coach Madden's background I've always been a huge fan of of what he brought to this game right. he represented and um I I certainly wish I did um I didn't get a chance to but I have heard many stories whether it was through my grandfather or through other people right so I, I wish I I wish I did though Rich well, about you know starting and being a head coach at a, a young age and then getting success at a very young part of your career and then and then after a while just he he, he would say some of the things that you're you're saying right now to yeah. be quite honest with you, Sean, you know, like that's what it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, Dick Vermeil has been a great sounding board for me. Okay. Um, you know, he, he had some similar experiences and then right. so did coach Walsh, you know, coach Walsh went through a very similar, I think there's, there can be sometimes a beautiful torment, but it's all about the perspective, um, not losing that. And I felt like I did. And, and ultimately, um, not fun, but it was a necessary thing. And I'm, I'm really grateful for those things that I learned. Cause I know I learned a whole lot more last year and a lot of the reflection that it forced than what I did in any of those first few years, even if they were a lot uh, better seasons in terms of the results. Okay. And let's finish up with the news again that uh, you just alluded to moments ago. You're going to be a dad when? When's the due date here? The due we'll date go. is uh, later in October. That's some scary stuff. If he's anything like his dad, Rich, he's going <laughs> to wear his mom out. But he is he's an active little guy in his mom's tummy. I mean, he's kicking and moving and um i wouldn't expect it any other way but it's been a really smooth pregnancy veronica's been awesome 
Um, yeah, exactly. What a blessing that's been. And so was able to go to the doctor yesterday and we're, we're really excited to, to meet our little man here in about a month. It's, uh, it still hasn't hit me. She's got the nursery set up. She's oh, ready boy. to go. And okay. Sometimes right. I sit there and look at it and think, Oh, this is some scary, awesome stuff. Just get out of the way, man. You can't That's do right. anything. You can't do any, honestly, you can't do anything. You just have to be supportive. There's the, you know, that's my two cents. I've had three of three kids, Sean, you know, you didn't ask, but I'll give my, 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 my help to you. I just get out of the way, you know, just, but, you know, obviously be there and be supportive. What, what week of the season is it? What game is it? Do you know, you know what? I, I don't know that oh, I, I'm one okay. week at a time, but I do know that this guy is around October 24th, Rich. <laughs> okay. I like it. You, you're you taking it one week at a time professionally and personally. I love it, man. That, Two coach speak for you. Okay. And you're registered. You should, and, and you should tell people you're registered at Tiffany's because that's where the Lombardi trophy is also made. Hey. That's a good line for you. Touche. Uh, I'll give that for you. Uh, thanks for the time, Sean. Greatly appreciate it. Congrats on, uh, on everything going on in your life personally and uh, good luck Monday night. I appreciate it. Always good talking to you, Rich. Right back at you. Sean McVay, the head coach of the Los Angeles Rams. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to three Eastern for free.